Today I'm interviewing Keir, not my cat, that'd be weird. Keir Starmer, he's named after the same person as my cat, uh, Keir Hardy, the first leader of the Labour Party. Keir Starmer is Labour's Brexit spokesperson. He's the one who has to go out and sell Labour's position on the minor issue facing the country, which is leaving the European Union. So I want to talk to him about that. How's it splitting Labour's base and what can Labour do to turn everything around? Thanks very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye on the doorstep, are people, have people been angry? Have they said, look, I'm pretty pissed off with Labour over Article 50? Has that, is that coming up at all? Brexit comes up now and again, but it doesn't come up anything like um, the number of times I thought it would. It's rare in London. Uh, it's even rarer outside of London. Um, people are talking about the health service, they're talking about education, they're talking about you know, what they want out of the final EU negotiations. Mm -hmm. But nobody really is talking about, or very few people are talking about Brexit itself. It's important for me to remind myself, why did I want to stay in the mm. EU? I want to stay in because I believe in collaboration and cooperation and internationalism. And I don't think there's any reason why a future deal with the EU shouldn't be built on those principles. Mm -hmm. This is a Labour heartland. Yep. You know, you've got a huge majority at the last election and people here voted to remain. And there are people in this constituency, no doubt, who think this is all a bit of a nightmare. Then you've got other people in Labour heartlands in the north who think they've got their country back, who voted Labour, you know, and they voted to leave. How do you bring that coalition together? They just fundamentally have different worldviews, different visions, different perspectives. That's what people argue. I, I mean, it is... The maths is difficult for the Labour Party because two thirds of our MPs are in um, leave seats and one third are in remain seats. We've got to do this from a position of principle. Did we agree that we'd put this decision out to the public for a vote? Yes. Did we agree that we'd accept the result? Yes. Have we got to accept the result? Yes. So the first position is a matter of principle. Having done this, having got a result, we've got to accept it. Um, and simply saying, well, it's better for us electorally if we do this or do that doesn't help. Because do you think the problem is, you know, on both sides, you get some who go, people who are at Leave are a bunch of knuckle draggings and xenophobic bigots. And on the other side, you've got this people who have remain a bunch of metropolitan liberal middle class elitists. And, and both, you get that, you do get that though, don't you? But the, yeah, you do get that, but these characterisations simply don't work. I mean, I think lots of people voted Leave for lots of different reasons. Mm. Um, but we have to ask ourselves, why did that phrase take back control? Why was it a Heineken phrase? Why did it get into people? And it, I think it got into people because too many people feel I don't have the ability to influence my life in the way I would like to. And we've got to listen to that. This vote uh, last year was years in the coming, was years in the coming. And I think there was political failure there uh, that went on for a very, very long time. And if we don't understand that, and we just take it as a superficial level of it's formally in or out of the, tra uh, of the EU, yeah. we're missing a major political issue of our time. A lot of people outside of London look at a constituency like yours and they think it's full of a bunch of latte drinking, uh, drinking yeah. uh, liberals wearing sandals, living in big homes. But actually a lot of people who are economically precarious around here, they vote to remain, so why is that? Yeah, first and foremost, I mean, all London constituencies, and this one in particular, um, is full of inequality everywhere. Huge inequality. We've got, you know, four in ten kids living in poverty in Camden. Every week at my surgery, I have mum, dad, two or three kids in a one-bedroom flat because we haven't got enough housing. So there's real deprivation of poverty right here in North London. So this idea of sort of metropolitan elite really doesn't work for this um, constituency. Rightly or wrongly, people look in on London mm. and the South East and think, well, that's where all the money, the power, the resources, the decision making is. And we are not getting any of it for ourselves. And so all of this was wrapped up. I don't think it was one dimensional. In terms of the difference between the Tory approach and the Labour approach, because some people will say this. Because you're saying Labour have accepted freedom of movement will end when we leave the European Union. Well, I don't know. It's not Labour, it's not Labour saying it. It's true. But if I, you accept that, then how can you get anything other than a hard Brexit? Because well, the EU will say, if you don't accept freedom of movement, that's it, fine. We're not going to give you single market, customs union, you are out. Yeah. Full stop. But the, the first thing is, freedom of movement is built into the treaty that we've just given notice that we're withdrawing from. So it's not Labour saying uh, freedom of movement is going. It's, it, is, it is going because it's one of the rules of a treaty that we've just said we're, we're leaving. So that, that's, that's a given. Um, and we can't get away from the fact that it was a major issue in the referendum. Mm -hmm. What we need now is a sensible grown-up debate about what a um, fair, effective and humane immigration policy looks like. And actually, when I say that to people, um, there's not 
that much resistance. People have equated the end of free movement with no movement. Actually, it's a blank piece of paper upon which we can write sensible rules that work for the economy and work for communities. And they need to be fair and effective, of course. They need to be more humane. Um, that is quite an opportunity for the Labour Party to do something in an area where, frankly, it's been on the back foot for too many years. So what's the key difference with the Tory Brexit that Labour are offering? Firstly, that we want that collaborative, cooperative outcome. Secondly, that we will absolutely entrench the EU rights that we've got now. And that is a major difference um, between us. But actually, the tone and approach is really important. These are international negotiations, and the tone and approach you take makes all the difference. And it could be the difference between um, having a deal and not having a deal. And not mm -hmm. having a deal is a disaster. I mean, this casual talking up of no deal um, is really, really damaging. There are huge differences here, and the tone and approach the Prime Minister is taking, this belligerent extremist approach, is walking us towards that position. What do you think that, you know, Theresa May the other week, she did that big speech, didn't she, going, basically, Ah, oh, they're coming to get us. You know, the EU leaders are threatening us, they're menacing us. What, I mean, what do you think? Was she, do you think she really meant that? Or was she genuinely trying to destroy our relations with our nearest neighbours, basically because she thought she'd get a few votes out of it? She wants to get a few votes out of that. That is exactly right. Party interest before the national interest. Yeah. That's exactly um, what it was. How would you say to people who are maybe undecided, they're thinking, Maybe I like Theresa May. Lots of people do like Theresa May. They've said they've changed, we're, we're standing up to vested interests. Uh, well, they've been in power for seven years. Like have, That's what yeah. I say to people. I've noticed. And uh, if you don't think seven years is enough to change things, uh, what about 1945? What about 1997? They've done absolutely nothing. They claim to be the party of the working people we've changed. There's done nothing in that seven years that's actually helped working people. Wages have gone down. The ability to go to employment tribunal has been wiped out by introducing um, fees. Um, and public service has been decimated in the NHS in crisis. So seven years and they've done absolutely nothing. Theresa May, what do you think of Theresa May? I think she's really guarded. I think she hates challenge. She hides behind um, mantra. Brexit means Brexit, no running commentary, no deals better than a bad deal, strong and stable. Look behind them and there's nothing there. What is the strategy now to, stop, to, 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 to keep the seats we've got, maybe even win some? Where, how do we do that? First and foremost, we're going to be confident. If we go around like this, we're not going to win anything. Position, like, in this, yeah, you know, if we go around saying, oh, the polls aren't very good, we, we've got to go around like that, actually. And if you go out with candidates who are like that, they're knocking on doors, they're getting a positive response. The first thing is actually believe that we're going to win. Some self-belief, some self-confidence. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, it counts for a lot. I think there's actually a pretty clear divide now between um, what we would do and what they would do. Our manifesto is clear. They've, they've gone for this narrow-minded, little Britain approach. This is giving a clear signal to the world that they want to close in on ourselves. There's two different versions um, of the future of Britain here and, and I think that really helps in going out there. So there's hope? There's hope. There's, let's have some confidence. Let's get out there. There are you know, 650 mini elections going on. We've got to be in those mini elections, not, not, not just obsessed with the national poll. So I want to hear what you think about the referendum, about Brexit, about the future of the country, whatever you want to throw in that comment box, I'll do my best to answer it. We do need to do a comments video. We've got loads of interviews uh, coming up. You can probably see some of them on screen if Adam has put them there. Uh, but as ever, thanks for subscribing and I'll see you next time.